Hi everyone, welcome to Mathematically Inclined. I am Neha, your math mentor. And today we are on part 3 of continuity. Well, if you haven't seen the previous two parts, then do that first. So now, let's get started. In today's video, we are discussing type 3. That means if you are already given a function to be continuous at an indicated point, then you have to find the unknown value. Well, let's see straight how we do that in the questions. Have a look at your first question. It says that fx is already given to be continuous at the point x equal to 3. And under this scenario, you have to find the unknown which is k. So, the very first step, the moment it says that the function is continuous at x equal to 3, therefore, limit x tending to 3 of fx should be equal to f of 3. So first we write the definition of continuity and then we just replace, that means limit x tending to 3. In place of fx I put x square minus 9 over x minus 3 is equal to f of 3 which is k. So on solving this, you know you can factorize and then cancel out x minus 3 from numerator and denominator. This implies the moment you substitute you get k as 6. So you are given the function is continuous at x equal to 0 and you have to find the unknown k. So once again you would say that limit x tending to 0 fx would be the same as f at 0. That means limit x tending to 0 1 minus cos 2x upon 2x square is the same as k. On solving this you get 2 sine square x upon 2x square is equal to k. Now these 2's get cancelled and you know sine square x upon x square. It's the same as saying limit x tending to 0 is sine x by x whole square is k which gives us k is 1. Have a look at the third question. Once again situation is the same so now let's tackle the problem. So fx is continuous at x equal to 0, therefore limit x tending to 0, fx is f of 0. So on substituting the values, this is what we get. Also, I have just separated out x with each of the terms. So once again, if you recollect this formula, which said limit x tending to 0, log of 1 plus x upon x is equal to 1. So we would be, we have to focus on all these three numbers to be the same. So moving back over here, so basically if I multiply and divide this with A, I can separate this out and write this as, and once again multiply this with minus B is given to be equal to K. You know this A comes out and the remaining limit becomes 1. So it's A into 1 minus. Likewise, you know this minus B comes out, makes it plus B into this entire limit would become 1 is equal to K. That means your K is A plus B. Look at the fourth question. So we are given the function is continuous at X equal to 1 and this time we have Two unknowns to be found. So starting with the definition, you know fx is continuous at x equal to 1. Therefore, limit x tending to 1 of fx is equal to f of 1. Now, as you, have, as you would have noticed, for x greater than 1 and less than 1, there are two different functions. So we would have to express the limit in terms of LHL and RHL. Now, substituting these values... So for left hand limit, this is the answer 5a x minus 2b. For the right hand limit, this is what the function is. And finally, f of 1 is given to be 11. So we are going to take, that means LHL equal to 11 and in the next case, RHL equal to 11 to get two equations. 
So on substituting, we get 5a minus 2b is equal to 11. Another equation would be 3a plus b equal to 11. Now, on solving these two equations, you get a is 3 and b is 2. Now, the fifth one looks very complicated, but it's just a little bit lengthy. So if you're given the function which is continuous at 0, you have to find the unknown a. Just be very careful when you put the square root sign. So going by the continuity of the function at x equal to 0, we get LHL equal to RHL equal to value of the function at 0. So let's try and sort one at a time. So if I take LHL is equal to f of 0 initially, if I equate these two. Now you're just using your trigonometry here. This becomes 2 sine squared 2x upon x squared is a. So this is like saying sine 2x upon x whole square. So you know you have to multiply and divide with 4. This is what we have. Twice of this gives us 1. This is 4. So 2 into 4 is a. That means a is 8. Although we've already got a equal to 8 by just equating LHL with the value of the function, but still, in order to be doubly sure, find a from RHL equal to f of 0 also. Limit x tending to 0, you have root x upon 16 plus root x minus 4 is equal to a. Now, if you recollect your class 11th limits once again, you would be tackling this problem by rationalizing. So, we rationalize the denominator. On rationalizing, you get 16 plus root x minus 16. Now, this root x and this root x get cancelled. You are only left with this. When you substitute x as 0, you get root 16 plus 0 plus 4 is 8. That means a is once again 8. Question 6. Once again, you are given that fx is continuous at x equal to 4 and you have to find the unknowns a and b. So let's get started with this. So once again, making use of fx is continuous at x equal to 4, you get LHL equal to RHL equal to value of the function at 4. Now, substituting the values, please note, x tending to 4 minus means this function. So if you recollect your modulus function, Modulus of x minus 4 could be split this way. It gives us the positive answer provided the number inside is greater than or equal to 0, which gives us x greater than or equal to 4. And when x minus 4 is less than 0, that is x is less than 4, you get 4 minus x. Making use of this, you know for 4 minus, that means for x less than 4, your denominator here becomes 4 minus x plus a is equal to limit x tending to 4 from the positive side, which is here, x is greater than 4. So this gives us x minus 4 upon x minus 4 plus b, and value of the function at 4 is a plus b. So this means minus 1 plus a is equal to 1 plus b is equal to a plus b. Now solve this the way you like, you have to get your a and b. If I equate the first and third, you get minus 1 plus a is equal to a plus b, which gives us b is minus 1. Likewise, if I equate second and third, we get 1 plus b is equal to a plus b, which gives us a is 1. So, a is 1 and b is minus 1 are the answers. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you understood the concept and would be practicing a lot of questions. Just take a moment to subscribe right now. Hit the like button if you found the video useful. And also share your feedback because your comments count.